Oh my god. Anyway, hey, pretentious engineer here. I know you didn't ask, but I want to show you how to make a vision board if you're interested in like keeping your life put together and doing fun projects. For me, I use this for content creation. So I want to go through everything I did in 2023 and how we landed across some of those goals and then where we're going for 2024. And if this is helpful for you, then maybe this becomes a series where I show you kind of the back end of a family frenzy LLC. So let's jump into it. First of all, if we look at my 2023 board, I break up it into multiple pieces. Um, and where I first started actually is at the very bottom with this backlog bippity boppity boo kind of thing. Um, so if you're not familiar with something called Scrum or Agile methodology, which it's nerd stuff, uh, it's very common for software development. It's a productivity tool where basically you lay out a backlog of all the tasks you have to do. And then normally these tasks are kind of organized based on criticality to whatever kind of application you're developing or how important they are to the user. And then individuals who are working on different projects will grab one of those tasks and move it over the to do, which is normally a commit for a couple of weeks called a sprint. And then after you sprint and do that, it'll go into in progress and then complete. Now, because my wife's not a nerd like me, uh, she needed a different language. So we called it brain dump and then bippity boppity boo, like complete to make it fun. So for those of you who are curious how I manage manage like working for Johnson Johnson on surgical robotics and taking care of three to four kids living in Japan and doing grad school and content creation. I'm very diligent with moving one thing at a time while still being kind of broad and focus. Um, so this is really helpful for me to get everything out of my brain and dump it on a board and then realize I could only do one task at a time. Now, one thing that I loved about this board was trying to figure out like what kind of content we wanted to create. So this was marking the start of year three for us in 2023 of making content and live streaming on Twitch and TikTok and all of that. And really these social media spaces have continued to shift and favor both short form content, long form content. There was an interest in podcasting, IRL in real life streams on Twitch. Um, and then also trying to build out a community and posting regularly there. Everything on this left side for quality content was just to kind of find all these sub pockets of a family frenzy that are interesting to me. So for instance, Japan IRL is VR footage of walks in Japan and we've recorded around 30 of them, but we only edited two because it's actually really challenging <laughs> to do VR edits. Um, so there's a lot of work we've had to do to like upgrade our hardware for that to even be possible. Um, and this kind of gave me some pockets where I could develop content and figure out how to get on a schedule. So that's quality content. Uh, naturally, I have the calendar. We have a two month calendar so I can kind of get a lead time of this. We actually use this for family scheduling more than content creation or anything like that. Now I use a tool called Buffer to track all of my content. Maybe someday I'll have an affiliate link for that. I don't know how that works. And then we wanted to make some phased goals, which is where the dollar sign yen was for 2023. So we were hoping to basically match our cost of living dash salary in Japan to see if there's ever a transition where I leave Johnson & Johnson and can still provide for my, country, my company or my company, my family in Japan. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like I'm relocated out here as an expat, which means that I get some pretty crazy benefits. Like J&J &J sets us up in a fairly large home in to central Tokyo. Uh, they cover schooling for our kids. They're at an international school uh, because of the language and culture barriers. And then they pay me a base comp. And what we wanted to look at is if we started to imagine multiple phases, what would it take for me to eventually build a business where I could work for myself? So the path we saw was eventually trying to fight for YouTube monetization, which we hit on December 20th. Uh, we did not hit our financial goal <laughs> of the monetization, but we hit the phase, which was really cool. 
Uh, we had an awesome video that went viral, got around 10 million views, and that pushed us over the thresholds for YouTube. Uh, then we wanted to work into affiliate links and merch and connecting that into our footage. Eventually digital classes, there's a couple books that we're interested in writing, and then looking at podcasting and monetizing that. Um, all of this will get restruffled for 2024, which you'll see in a minute. And then the final piece that I want to focus on is the skill tree. So I like video games that have skill trees. I've always found it neat to have to like commit to a path. Like you can't just do all the trees. I mean, eventually you can if you want to sink your life into a game. And for me and Felicia, that choice was Borderlands. We used to love to play Borderlands 2. We really geeked out about it. And I wanted to look at which skills I had to develop in order to actually really make content creation like a legitimate path for us. There's certain things that we just weren't set up to delegate. Um, there's skills I had to pick up. So I wanna go through the skills we got. So we'll start with the business end of things, which I'm not excited about. I continued to try to find people who wanted to partner with me and just do these things. Um, and it's just, been an area of personal growth like the back end of a business is hard so one of the first things I focused on was the social media rhythm of life and figuring out how to limit how much time I'm spending in those spaces while still creating for them uh, and then also me coming from a faith-based context trying to figure out like for me personally like what does God want me to do <laughs> as a content creator and what does he not want me to do uh, and letting him kind of lead when I'm live, when I'm making long form, when I'm making short form, how all this stuff fits. Um, and then having some integrated financials. And one of the paths we found for doing that was using a platform called Start Global. Again, maybe affiliate link in the description if I figure out how to integrate all this. Uh, Start Global allowed us to make a legal LLC based in the US while we live in Japan. And then they have some integrated banking and things that we haven't fully connected. Um, but holistically, we found a solution that I'm learning how to use this year. Uh, concerning budget, taxes, all the money phases, all that failed. Didn't get that. That's fine. Now, audio video AV is where I had a ton of growth. The first thing was just figuring out how to keep our TikTok account in the U.S. Because when we moved to Japan, all of our viewership tanked because they region shifted us. And I talk too quickly to non-native English speakers in my content. Um, so we found a way to like use a phone without a SIM card, connecting to a wireless router, connected to a router, running a VPN from Chicago. It's like a hot mess, but basically we figured out how to flip our account and keep it in the US. Um, and it is a workflow nightmare, but it's been really helpful from like a viewership perspective. So that's been really cool. Uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2, that is like a wireless mic setup that I figured out how to use. Uh, started to get balanced with long form, short form content. We made some progress with figuring out how to do VR. Definitely optimized OPS for filming and live streaming. This came through a project called DadBot, where I recorded a 16 week workout program to train people up for a half marathon. It's completely free. There'll be a link in this video. If you're interested in running a half marathon and you're heavier set, have pre existing health conditions or injuries, DadBot could be for you but it forced me to reevaluate how I do recording through something called OBS, which is Open Broadcasting Studio. Um, and it really allowed me to learn how to record to quickly edit, which is that kind of film for minimal editing. Because I put out around 112 workouts worth of content, just released the last couple. So that was a huge growth for me, very difficult. And then figuring out how to do IRL or in real life streams in Japan. Uh, the way that I figured this out is we got a like little pocket Wi-Fi connected to a Japanese cell signal. I put a GoPro on my head and I go for runs and talk to people on YouTube. It's awesome. Eventually I could do it for like touristy stuff too. And then for post-production, so audiovisual is kind of focused on either live streaming or recording. Post-production is like all the nuts and bolts to actually get content out. So went through beginning DaVinci training. DaVinci is a tool for doing video editing. It's free. Um, and then we went through like the intermediate process. So I, like VR requires extra skills. It's a pain. Um, and then figuring out how to do thumbnails on Canva. So we got a license for that. Uh, learning how to do descriptions. I'm actually using chat GPT to optimize all my video descriptions for SEO, which is like search 
optimization. I don't know what the E stands for. It'd be good to know. Uh, we just finished file optimization so that I can like organize content and edit because we were like maxing out our PC on stuff. Uh, and then I'm working on actually assets for quick editing. And then our post-production workflow became really fast because of DadBot, like it really forced that skill set. Now, community is where I sacrificed a lot. I had a vision of creating like this thriving Discord community of people that would connect through our content, connect with one another, do cool stuff, have like a learning nerd, helping people get hired kind of thing. I'd love to build that. Didn't happen that year, might not happen this year. Um, and then the other space I really wanted to focus on was creative writing. Uh, I've been in grad school. I enjoy the process of writing. I have a vision for quite a few books. Um, and I started to make a writing routine and do a little bit of research on how to actually make content, but didn't step into it in 2023. That's on the 2024 roadmap. So with that, let's go through the changes for 2024 and where we're going with this whole family frenzy vision thing. And uh, that way you can see what we're doing. So first of all, I changed it from quality content towards targets. So targets have kind of given me a good language of figuring out what are the pockets that I want to build out. And because we hit monetization on YouTube, one of the focuses is shifting more into long form content. Long form content monetizes a little bit better because it's longer, there's more time for ads. Short form is still a great way to start. Right now, if I get around 2000 views on short form content, I make like a buck which is amazing because I used to make zero. Um, but I want to start building out some of these sub brands on the long form side. Uh, the first of which is pushing people, not pushing people, lovingly inviting people into the dad bod journey. So because all that content already exists, it's 112 workouts. I want to create a better kind of funnel to connect people with who I am to the dad bod brand and allow them to start doing that program because it all pre-exists it's all organized in a google class so that's kind of the first target second one is i've started writing uh, under this idea of like one-on-one -on -one with the pretentious engineer so either answering questions from the community or just journaling on what's interesting to me i would like to build that out so if i'm writing or working on a book i can live stream that put those videos out efficiently and bring people into the writing process with me um, and then also kind of have a side quest podcast connected with it. So as I do a journal, then podcast it. And then that way I can kind of get like double the engagement for the same amount of work. Um, an area I'm trying to focus more on, which is kind of strange to say is gaming. Like I want to play video games, both with my kids and by myself and making space for that. So finding efficient ways to either live stream it or just make good walkthrough pretentious gaming sessions. So the area I'm kind of leaning with it is doing like 100%. Like there's nothing more pretentious than just like completely checking every box in a game. Crash Bandicoot is one of those games that I love doing that with, but there's others. So I'll probably do 100% series on different games um, and then try to make that like a cathartic 45 minutes of gameplay, 10 minutes of edit and upload so that I can do it a couple of times a week. I want to do more DIY projects, which first person view, uh, I have to find the right way to get into this space because there's a lot of really difficult, complex edits involved with it for people that do it well and professionally. Whereas I just want to casually make cool stuff and like let people be in the shop virtually. And then I want to start to get the Japan IRL VR footage out and figure out where that fits. There's a red dot here for my wife to kind of step into that. She was initially helping with those edits. And then also having her build out like an ultimate Japan guide because we get a lot of questions on like, I'm going to Japan for a week. What should I do? Where should we go? Um, what food should we avoid? I have a large family. How do I make this happen? So all of these are kind of targets for 2024. We'll see which ones get most prioritized, but those are all the sub pieces of a family frenzy where we welcome folks into the frenzy of our world as we raise four kids in Japan in like four weeks. So that's targets. And then for the financial side of things, I actually connected the phases to levels of the content factory. So the goal of the content factory is for me to proceduralize my creative process and kind of optimize it to like, you know, squeeze the most juice out of a lemon. Um, so finding areas to really scale how I create so that I can still hold down a day job 
still be very present as a father and see if we can build a family frenzy LLC into a viable business um, and a business that really blesses those in our community with great content, great experiences for those that like join us on YouTube and the Bra big brain club um, that it's something they enjoy being a part of. Right. So I want to find ways to build that out. So I made like a four floor roadmap. This is based off of the uh, shoot. What's the level? It's from the original Crash Bandicoot Bandicoot Toxic Waste level where you jump over the barrels. So I just wanted to make it look like rolling barrels with different like key accomplishments as you go. So all of the financials are linked to each stage. So let's just walk through what I think 2024 looks like. But again, this is a loose roadmap. So you never know where all this lands. So the first part, which I kind of pre uh, almost checked off, is automating 14 shorts per week. Now I was brute forcing this a lot using an app called CapCut which is helpful, but my workflow is slow. And what I tried to do is rather than being on TikTok every day, making a video here or there, watch, doing engagement, I now do batch edits. So I will devote three or four hours on a Monday because I like to rest on Sunday. And I will pull up all these videos, download them all, do my little five cents of pretentious engineer on top of it edit it with captions, put it on a Google Drive so I could download it on the TikTok phone and then post it on Buffer Automated to LinkedIn and YouTube and all this other stuff. Like it's semi-automated right now. What I'm trying to get it to is doing all my edits on my PC using DaVinci Resolve and creating a lot of shortcuts to truly um, increase the speed of that, if that makes sense. So this, this should be yellow. It's not done yet, but it's close. I'm impatient with progress. Um, the next thing is creating digital assets for OBS uh, and DaVinci and Canva. So things like branding, logo, badges for people that subscribe for a certain amount of time or join, sorry, on YouTube language, little tiny transition snippets. Anytime I go live with DIY or run, having different thumbnails I can use for that, um, making all those assets proactively so that they scale and make the quality of our content higher. That's one of the first pieces. Next one is affiliate links and LLC integrations. By LLC integrations, I mean I can go through the process to get an affiliate link for a different company like Canva or uh, DaVinci. Actually, I don't know if DaVinci has one. Maybe I just kind of burped. I had too much cauliflower. I'm sorry about that. Um, but the LLC integration is hard because I have to get the banking to connect. And if they pay through PayPal, I don't have a process for that. So I want to make a repository of all the things that I use and enjoy that I would naturally bring people into. So like one of the biggest ones I do is like I use this remarkable tablet all the time. All my artwork, all of my badges and emojis, it's all made on remarkable. A lot of my animations are remarkable. So like I'd want to get a link for that, put it in my videos and then integrate it into the business so I just get paid from it someday. Again, these are the automations I'm working towards. And all of these require me to be careful with how much content I'm putting out because I have to take the time to build the, the process before I see the fruit, the wampum fruit, right? Um, and that kind of goes back to automating the 14 shorts. It's kind of like keeping the lights on. That brings in some trickle funding from YouTube, but I don't want to go more than that right now because that keeps me from getting into long form content, better live streams and all these other roadmap items. The next one, which I definitely spent the start of this year on is optimized file management, both on Google and PC. Uh, the one thing I need to add to this is backing everything up. Right now I have no backup solution. So if this computer gave out, Lord bless this Omen HP, banging Ulfstein gaming laptop thing I bought four years ago. If it dies, I lose like four years of work, which would suck. So I need to figure out how to back that up appropriately. Don't have that solved. Um, and then I'm working on building DaVinci Resolve templates and presets. So if I film something that I record in OBS, I can throw it into DaVinci. Everything's pre-populated. There's a guy named Mr. Alex Tech that I've been watching a lot of his tutorials. 10 out of 10, you should watch him if you're in content creation. Um, I bought his little magic, um, he's got like a magic application that makes your video editing really fast and good. 
I think. I have to figure out how to use it. But basically, I want to make the editing process incredibly fast based on what I learned from the dad bod series so that I could do long form edits in less than 10 minutes. And that seems like reasonable, but if you think about like something you're recording for 50 minutes or an hour, you need to then edit it in a way where you don't have to sequentially go through all of it. So how do you throw the captions on quick? How do you have a couple pre-animations that are already baked? So you just click a couple buttons and boom, it's posted. And you put most of the time into the thumbnail, which is what people see. So if we accomplish all that, that's the first floor. We are establishing the content factory, which is where you get the humumga or the aku aku. Aku aku is the good one. Uka uka is the bad one, right? So that's kind of like really establishing YouTube. If we complete that, if we look at our monetization roadmap, which this is all guesstimations, I think if we do it well, we could probably be around 2,500 a month from when I look at comparable creators that are actually like disciplined in that space. Um, some unknowns in that are also like adding in merch integrations with TikTok and stuff, but it all takes time. Now the next part, the next stage, uh, level two, it's going to really be making like an excellent live streaming experience because I actually, as much as I like short form derpy videos that are toxic by the pretentious engineer or even like long form conversations like we're having now, um, I like the live experience the most. I like being able to answer questions and come alongside people right where they're at and help them on their journey when it's, whether it's college, life decisions, family, dating, uh, whether they should live in Japan, all that kind of stuff. So. What I want to do is kind of build up that process again so it's efficient and better. One of the first things which I'm almost complete with is custom badges and emoji for multiple levels of people that join us so that they feel like they're getting value back as they join the big brain club. So we now have eight big brain levels based on how long you're part of our community working your way all the way up to like PhD and cyborg brain. It's super nerdy. I'm going to make an awesome animation that like makes it a factory that creates the brains. It's I love it. It's, it's silly. Um, and then I want to make a repository for thumbnails. So if I have an hour gap where I'm going to go in the garage and do some laser cutting or build with wood, I don't want to be taking 20 minutes to make a thumbnail connected to that live experience. I need to have a repository where I can pick across from 10 to 20 that are already pretty decent. Just add a title, the description auto loads, and I just go live because that gives me more time to connect with the community but also it helps me finish that quickly so I can go back into being the dad or things like that um, there's also a desire for me to kind of refresh some of my branding on OBS it's a little dated it's okay um, but it's just like a preset overlays and things I bought I want to make them using the remarkable so I actually make like little custom pretentious engineers girds <laughs> girds gears and racks and pinions and pulleys and science crap <laughs> that like overlays with the camera so it looks cool that's kind of my own, one of my dreams and i want to do it myself because there's a charm to what i make with my own hands um a big one is this mobile stream cart so the vision for the mobile stream cart is right now when i work out in my main living room i have a whole bunch of cables that i run to a diaper changing table that i then stack a kid's bench and a kid's chair on mount the camera i have a mirror i lean against it my computer is streaming in a corner i roll out my mat all my weights it's a nightmare it takes me sometimes 15 to 35 minutes to set up and tear down depending on how motivated I am which adds an hour to my workout I love working out in community I think it's helpful to show a representative body um, and trying to find confidence in my lack of confidence in those spaces but I need to find a way to go live much faster across multiple platforms so designing it building it would actually be like a huge time saving where I plug one thing into a wall and click go, but it takes money to buy all those materials, buy a PC, buy a nice curved monitor, get a huge mirror, right? So I could check form, um, possibly do a two way mirror on it. There's a lot of ways I can make it more of a project than it needs to be, but that's, uh, that'd be a huge door opener for live streaming. Uh, the next one 
is one that I like. A lot of people focus on this much earlier as content creators. I have little pieces of it, but it's like alerts or integrations for live engagement. So if somebody says something significant in chat or they can press a couple buttons to control the lights in your house, there's a lot of this stuff if you look up, um, oh shoot, what's his name? He's amazing, he's from Australia. Noob, he had made Noob's Commander. He made like his own application to do really flipping cool stuff. Shoot. Yeah, I, if you know in the comments, put his name. He's great. He's a Twitch streamer. Uh, he does YouTube tutorials. Nutty. Nutty's fantastic. I don't have time to integrate any of the crap Nutty does. But eventually, it would be cool to make that time if we're like financially on the level. And the final thing is multi-stream optimization. So being able to bring the same level of quality to tick, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitch in parallel. Where right now, like one's on a phone, another's on another phone, one's going through OBS. I can't multi-stream efficiently, cost-effectively, and creating an experience that's helpful. Because we have people in all these different contexts and I like to engage them, but every time you have to set up another platform, it adds time. So really figuring out how to do that well. And even figuring out how to do that IRL or in real life. So if I go for a run in Japan, it would be great to live stream that to YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, but it requires like a backpack with gear and a server. It's like a, it's an experience to create. But if we do all that, we get our new, our first Crash Bandicoot life, we would get a top tier live experience. Now we're getting into it. So actually, if the live process goes well, if we check our financial process, um, I think we could probably bump it by about 1500 a month just by people joining our community, engaging the chat, donos, things like that. If we really built it for people to be part of, then they're more likely to subscribe or join um, and kind of partner with us in what we're building and experience the fruit from that as we add cool new stuff. So that's phase uh, two. <laughs> phase three is a 360 video and automated shorts. So one of the paths to success in content creation, if you don't know it, is like there's a sweet spot of quality and quantity. And when you're first learning, you just want quantity. Make yourself make a lot of crap because you're learning how to talk. You're learning how to do content that's engaging and interesting. Like for all I know, cause I haven't done a lot of long form content. If my edit is lame on this, no one's made it to this part of the video, right? They all drop off, right? So, so in the beginning, focusing on quantity versus quality is important because you have to learn how to create quality. But then what happens is you keep edging forward this standard of quality until it starts to become comparable with other creators in your niche. And then you start to figure out, well, how do I maximize quality and quantity? Those 14 edits per week on shorts, I have it kind of like optimal quality, optimal quantity. What this path is interesting is, well, what if we could really start to scale it and be able to put, you know, 21 shorts out a week, seven or eight long form pieces of content a week, and they're all good comparable quality right because that's what you start to get paid for um with limited time from me is the other magic so one of the first things is creating a nas or raid storage that's expensive um <laughs> i'm like immediately not excited about this but ideally if we become a viable business then we could do it basically if we want to do vr editing well for all those videos we have and be able to store them and leverage them in short form content later I need more than the storage available on this PC with an external SSD. Like I'm already maxed. You need storage with redundancy and it's like hundreds and into the thousands of dollars to integrate it. Well, have a server for video editing at our house, connect multiple PCs. Like it's hoopla. Okay. Um, but this would be helpful for scaling and things. Um, the next piece that builds off of that is a multi PC server workflow so that I can, me and Felicia can be editing in parallel different ways on different platforms. Um, and then creating templates for the 360 VR videos with different 360 assets that get overlaid onto the content. I'm really excited about 
creating these virtual walks in Japan for people because it helps them see where they want to go before they buy plane tickets. You get a different immersion from 360 footage than standard like 1080p and you have control over perspective, which is really neat. So I want to build toward this, but there's hardware we have to invest in to do it well. Um, and y'all are welcome to give me other suggestions in the comments on if I'm overanalyzing that. Next piece is the Family Frenzy Ultimate Japan Guide. So I would like to make a guide, ideally free, <laughs> that has like a digital product that has a link to all of these 360 videos, but then detailed travel guides for if you're going to Odaiba or Shinjuku or Kyoto or Nara or Hokkaido or Okinawa, like all the places our families got into experience through the blessing of my job. Um, we would love for you to have a good roadmap of things that work, especially if you have families as well. That's kind of our niche because traveling with a family in Japan is hard. And we would love if it's free and available to our community, it pushes people through our content, but then there's also the affiliate links hook and things like that, that allow it to be financially rewarding for us, but we have to build it for you, if that makes sense. And now this is where we get into kind of lucrative pockets. Um, Again, this is a huge build. I got a fourth kid coming. I'm almost done with grad school. I'm moving into hopefully a different global leadership role. So I don't even know if we're going to make it to level three. But there's some applications that exist that allow you to mine through long form content to generate shorts in an automated way. Right now, all of my shorts are like I see someone's cool video. I react to the video. That's the that is the, <laughs> the most quality and content I can bring. Content quality quality and uh quantity that's awesome what i'm interested in doing like if you like i watch watch a lot of short clips of joe rogan's podcast half the time they're not even done by joe rogan somebody else goes through they mine his content for good zinger moments and they super edit it so it's really high quality really stands out well they put it out there it gets a whole bunch of views and then sometimes I see that and then I go back to the full conversation because I actually want to know like what he was talking about with like the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. What I'd like to do is figure out what tools are available to do that on my lives, particularly my runs. Because when I go for a run, it's anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, depending on how far I'm going. And there's lots of really interesting moments where someone asks a question, I provide a good response. And if I could find a way to pull all those moments, add captions, get it down to short form content and automate how it's scheduled and uploads. So it's like I push a button. That's the goal. Whether I make the scripts that do it or there's existing off the shelf solutions. And then also AI automations for the shorts, the edits, all the captions, like building better chat GPT scripts because there's still semi automation in my process. But if we do that, we would have 360 VR footage and automated shorts, which is that's third stage is a high climb. Uh, for 2024 i think at that point that would double overall revenue i think that'd get us up to around eight grand a month if we were putting out 21 or 30 shorts a week eight pieces of long form content a week and this vr guide for japan i think that that's pretty strong and now the fourth level is what i want to just skip straight to it's something i'm super excited about which we're calling ah i lost my track which are calling the one-on-one -on -one book series or one-on-one -on -one with the pretentious engineer i've really enjoyed writing blog posts about some of my journeys as an engineer what i want to start to do is create a book series similar to like magic treehouse i used to rip through all those books and just make very short books on very focused topics based on experiences of pain and struggle in my life as an engineer uh, the first one would just be one-on-one -on -one with the Preventious Engineer and provide a roadmap for how to connect with people and transform the way you approach one-on-ones with your boss, but also skip level meetings, peer meetings, senior executive meetings, like how to talk to people to solve problems and to also progress in your career. But then I have a whole list. I think I have like 24 written down over here. So the goal is if I could take all these automations for content creation or a podcast or VR footage, like what if we were able to automate the efficiency with which I could create books? That's like my new mind expanding question for content. So first part is to lay out a roadmap 
which books are in the series, what's the order that makes sense, how does it develop people. And then each of these books is like maybe eight chapters, but they're short. So if you were entering a one-on-one -on -one relationship with someone and you need to notice they have a huge gap in how they navigate risk, you could just read the risk book each week and then talk about it. Like it's like little mini book studies you could do in a mentor-mentee relationship. Uh, from there, we need to do some rough covers and designs and titles, which I do on the Remarkable. Draft and edit my first book. That's kind of the biggest climb to figure out how to write one for the first time and how to format it. And then build it into a template is key. That's what processes it. So figuring out how to strip out all the details and leave the structure so that when I have another brain thought, I can just hammer it out. Because like for grad school, I can hammer out like a 24 to 30 page paper with enough adrenaline and fear of failure. I can do that in about mm, a day, <laughs> you know, so I can put out like 30 work. 30 pages in a day, which is about eight, uh, was that 8,000, 8,000 words or so. So like, I'm, I'm guessing like a book could happen in a couple days if I have the right template so that I could just show up and write what's on my mind and have all the other pieces fit. So after that though, you got to launch the book. I got to do the socials with it. Part of that's also live streaming when I'm writing. So people actually are part of the journey and providing feedback. Um, and then figure out future book releases um, so that they take less than three months per book, right? It's more work than doing a video, but ideally I would be able to start to roll through this stuff quickly. So friends, that was a lot. I think I've been live. How long have I been talking? 36 minutes. That's like one of my longest YouTube videos. But anyway, this is how I approach content creation, creative products. Uh, creative projects. I like the rhythm that you get from the sprint agile methodology of backlog to do in progress complete. But I really like overlaying that with epics is the language we use in agile, but basically a roadmap. So for 2023, that was the skill tree. For 2024, it was the content factory. And I really like structuring it that way because it forces me to focus on things within my control. It's not focused on how many views I get or how much revenue I get. The money yen sign for the phases is all a projection so that I can kind of guide what I focus on when, if I'm trying to build a business, but I'm not at the point where I can tell YouTube to give me this much per month so that I can eventually move out of my career into that and feed my family. It could be way less, it could be way more, but what I can focus on is these automations to develop higher quality content that's more engaging, more of a blessing to folks in our community, better enriching live experiences that people want to be a part of in order to connect with one another and with me. And then eventually bringing them into these VR experiences in Japan and finally into a book series that could be a huge blessing to them as they navigate corporate life. Because corporate life is hard. It can be fruitful, but it's challenging. And a lot of times, there's a lack of transparency that people have to find their way through. And I want to just take down all of those walls so that people can see the world as it is and navigate it with wisdom intact. So that's the plan. If this is helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, join, all the things. Um, and then in the comments, let me know if this is something you want me to keep doing because I can actually track progress towards this and share the things I did so that it's a replicable path. Right? So if I find a solution for storage or automating content and I share that, then it's something you can try in your unique journey as a creator. So with that, what is it? What's my catchphrase? You can sip on that. <laughs>